Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So much fun crafting happening today, and we're totally switching gears. And we're going to do a little bit of scrapbooking, album making. And we have a fabulous bundle um, and a bit of inspiration if you have uh, the Christmas album here. Um, um, I've been working on this December one. And uh, isn't it just so cute? It, I'm going to show you the bundle in just a second, but it's got some really great memories in it already that I've made out. Um, I definitely need always this reminder. And, you know, just cute to, if you're not like a super skilled scrapbooker, scrapbooker um, a little album like this is just enough uh, because it lets you sort of use the collections and in the bundle, you get all of the things, like all the little pieces of paper to just take some regular photos like this that you might have on your phone. I just printed some out on, this is just actually not even on photo paper, but you could if you had a photo printer too. Um, and, but I just printed this on regular printer paper because you know what? It really does the, does the trick. Um, and I love that we can kind of put these, um, albums together and I've got lots of like blank pages still. And the album actually comes with a lot of, um, photo sleeves. So you can decorate inside those or outside those, or you can just put regular photos in these and just, um, decorate the front. But it really is nice to have some albums like this that come out that you look at at Christmas time, um, or that are just for a particular Christmas. I also decorated the front. Uh, this is what the album looks like in the kit. It's just a plain um, album. It has all of those pages in it and you're going to get all of the stuff. So let me set aside the one that I've started decorating so that you can see what you're going to get. Um, we've got over a hundred dollars worth of stuff in this bundle. So it's a mix of um, Vicki Booten's Evergreen and Holly and um, the Crepe Papers Mittens and Mistletoe collection. So you're gonna get uh, the album and in the album it has those um, pages that you saw uh, ready to decorate. We're also gonna send you a big um, 24 by 24 inch paper pad with all of these great holiday papers. I mean, you can use this for all kinds of different crafting even if it's not Christmas or holiday related, there's some great uh, prints in here and it's just so gorgeous. So we're gonna bust that open uh, today and make some more stuff. Plus we wanna give you all of those little embellishments and stickers. So you're getting a full pack of stickers um, so that you can be you know, doing titles and things like that. Um, the sticker packs, beautiful. Um, you're getting the ephemera packs too. Um, what this does is um, gives you all of these great little cutouts to help you decorate your pages. And you're getting um, the enamel dots. And these are all really super cute. They're raised uh, just for embellishments on your page, plus the roll of um, seven washi tape in all these different holiday uh, prints. So that's going to be fun uh, for decorating. And last but not least, you get, woo, I just spilled it. Um, you get this big bag of, <laughs> I just spilled them, uh, chipboard uh, letters and photos and or um, numbers and words. And it's all um, centered around uh, that holiday theme. And they're super, super thick and helps give your page lots of texture. Um, so we're definitely going to be including some of those in uh, a bit of what we're doing here. So let's get at it and let's make a page so that you get what I mean um, by uh, decorating up your photos. If you mostly follow me for sewing, let's sew a little bit on these pages too, uh, because you don't have to use adhesive all the time. Um, you can just stitch right on the paper, which is really, really fun. So in the album that I've got going, you can see I decorated the front. I did a little bit of journaling. I've got some of those ephemera pieces, the little decorations, and um, some of those chipboard uh, pieces here, a uh, little envelope um, just to decorate the front. So you can decide if that's something that you're up for. Um, and then on the in the pages that come with the, the book, you could do a little something, let's say, with some of the numbers. Let's say you had something big happening on Christmas Eve and you wanted to um, showcase one of your photos like that, like with the calendar background you could, or maybe uh, the 25th is the day that you're celebrating this year and you could pull a photo from there. 
Um, so you, you kind of have an idea of like, ooh, the calendar, that's kind of a neat background. Um, this one, it gives you lots of space that go ahead and journal, like put some memories from Christmas here, uh, from this year, just write the date. Or if you have like a stamp, you can stamp the date and, you know, 2023 and going into 2024, like what was happening in December? And maybe you, um, have the coordinating photo on this side and you can decorate it up a little bit. Um, or what I've done on this, uh, page is do a double layout. And I chose papers that were similar on both sides. And it was us at uh, an, a local lake that was frozen over and that we like to go skating on. And, you know, these are just pictures from my phone and using some of those uh, pieces. And this is just a continuation of that. And, you know, playing in the snow, traditions, mittens, like all of the little pieces come together so beautifully. And then that tree. Uh, the trees, that's the, that's the background paper. So pick a paper that, you know, you think is kind of cute and then start building from there. That's what I'd kind of suggest. So I love, you know, like this, you could put like all the gifts that, you know, you got or the kids got, and maybe you have a, a big photo of them or, or something like that, where they're showing what they got. Um, you know, have, have a little bit of fun with it. I've just got a bunch of photos that I've, I've printed out here. And, you know, for me, it doesn't matter so much that it's all from exactly the same um, event. Uh, what matters is preserving the memory of it. And um, if you're sort of intentional about that, um, you know, these really become keepsakes and not just photos on your phone. So um, grab the bundle. It's $39.95 uh, for Black Friday, which is you know, a steal <laughs> because you're getting so much stuff in that bundle, $39.95. And then if you wanted to add, we've got the uh, paper, the mittens and mistletoe from Crate Paper uh, Advent Calendar. This is super easy to put together. Um, you just, it's just a fold and uh, glue or tape kind of thing. Um, and it's nice on a mantle or on a table, um, something like that. But this is a, this is a cute one and only $9.99. So these are great. We're, we're clearing them out. And if you've already got something like this, because maybe you subscribe to our subscription box, then hopefully you'll find some inspiration. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, these two since, um, or maybe I should do, maybe I'll do the December, the calendar one, because then I can do a double layout and uh, have it kind of go together. So I'll set the book aside and... We'll insert it after. And I'm going to choose some papers that are going to kind of go along with this date theme. So I like the idea of like the 25th being um, a highlight. Or I could go ahead and choose the numbers sort of like that and put it on like the, the day that the 25th is falling. Um, I should actually look and see what day it falls on this year so I know whether to put it on the Monday, the Tuesday. Karin, will you look and see what Christmas Day falls on this year? Um, and then, you know, let's let's choose a great photo. If you don't have a photo right yet, then leave what's called a photo place card, where you just cut um, a piece of cardstock. The size of the photo you know will work on the layout. Um, if you don't have a photo that you know you want to use for that quite yet. So on saturday okay so the 25th can be like over here at the edge under the saturday column and we can have a bit of fun with making that line up so that's good uh thank you for that all right so let's pop open the paper uh bundle here monday okay monday <laughs> everybody's everybody's no wait it's monday all right that's fine we'll just put it over here we haven't glued anything on yet so we're all good um, let me know in the comments, what do you guys do? Uh, how do you preserve your Christmas memories? Are you a scrapbooker? Do you ever do anything like this? Or is it basically since technology took over, are all of your photos and everything just on your phone? Um, yeah, I think we're all a bit guilty of all of the photos just living on our phone. Um, but it is nice to, oh, I gotta get that sticker off. It is nice to print them out and you know, good luck finding a traditional photo album these days, but scrapbooking albums are plentiful. 
So, ooh, isn't that nice as a strip? Maybe I'll, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull some pages out I'm kind of inspired to use. And isn't that nice? All right, let's keep going. And I'll try to pull off, like I can see whether they kind of match, oh, that kind of matches nicely together. And obviously I'm not gonna use the entire, entire sheet, but I'm also not gonna, you know, worry if, um, you know, there's some left over. So this kind of a sheet is kind of cool because you can not only use it as a background, but you could cut these out if it has a saying on it that you think works, like bundled up, burr, snow, bay, snow day, happy holidays, from me to you. Like you've got lots of options here. Oh, this is great for just a generic background for sure. That kind of really does go nicely with what we're doing. Oh, this is so cute. All of these are so cute. Snow. Oh, I love that kind of. It's nice just looking at these. If you love fabric, you'll love scrapbooking paper um, and vice versa. If you love scrapbooking paper, you'll love fabric. Um, I love this kind of a sheet too because you can cut these out and use them as little note cards or little one-offs. So I'm going to pull that out too and see what we can get out of that, even if it's just like a little uh, one of those titles. Oh, these are all so cute. You can cut the presents out or use it as a background. This is so nice as a full layout. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me doing more scrapbooking videos. We've really skewed to sewing lately, but we used to do tons of scrapbooking videos. Um, so yeah, let me know if that's something that you're interested in because I love doing it and I'm happy to do it on um, every once in a while too. Okay, let's think here. What I'm gonna do is grab a, let, let me see, it, you know, it helps to have a, a photo that you want to, you know, jump off from. Um, so I'm just gonna go through a couple of the photos and see, you know, I like the whole like family gathering together is fun. <laughs> the kids, that's always good. Um, my niece last year we're in this play um, I like the winter photos too we have a couple of Christmas photos so I'm going to do the Christmas photos here um, this is Violet and my niece Emery and you know they're cousins and they're always together uh, and Ruby too but she just doesn't happen to be in this photo we'll give her some cred there she is <laughs> the, these three are the ones that are always together Ruby Violet and Emery that's my mom and uh, in these photos, Emery and Violet are together for the holidays, and you can kind of see the snowy background. So it sort of sticks with our theme, and this is Christmas morning uh, last year, so that works. So now that we kind of have an idea of what photos we can use, then we can try to decide, like, how we're going to frame them. Like, what's the best way to have them stand out? And if Christmas is on the Monday... Uh, this year, then, you know, we can kind of have our 25 or whatever, um, uh, you know, on the Monday line. And let's see what other kind of ephemera pieces stand out. When you get these packages, they come, um, there's an opening at the bottom so that you can kind of reseal it. So let's spread some out and and really once you start spreading these out the inspiration will really start to fly because you'll kind of see how like the theme that you might want to have come together like you know if we're using that present um you know it's that green kind of really works with this background um you know how what, what direction do you want to go in uh could it be this kind of thing and do we keep the one photo on this side and one photo on this side? You know, just, it'll start to come to life and get uh, a bit of a, oh, this is cute, like with the toque. <laughs> it, it might get a little bit of a, a, a sort of an energy of its own when you start laying things out and see what kind of fits. So I really love the idea of the presence and especially in these tones because it's really working with the background. And because it's about the kids, sort of keeping it light and bright and uh, like things that they would like 
kids, they're not all cardinals and poinsettias. No, they're like hot chocolate and gifts. So let's keep that kind of thing. You know, my kids definitely are not about peace. So no, not that's not the right one for this. But these little cute, like the toque, uh, maybe the pine cones, that's, that's reading a little older too. Um, <laughs> the skunk could be cute with the little bow. That's definitely feeling like their vibe. This kind of a thing with the two hot chocolates, you know, for the two girls, like that's a, that's a really good play. So, um, I've pulled out a few of these that feel a little like their energy and the rest I can kind of just set aside. Otherwise, it sometimes gets a bit overwhelming. Um, so if I kind of say, okay, like those work, um, and the color scheme kind of works because I've laid them out on my page, now we can decide, okay, what else? Um, I like that the 25 is in the black and everything else is sort of a bit more um, on like tone on tone. We could take a look at some of the stickers and see if those work too. Um, again, there's a few more of those presents that are like that. A couple labels. I like that there's, um, you know, a few things like this, like bundle up. That kind of works because they're here outside. Um, you know, they're in their winter clothes. You can see Emery's got her Tim Biebs hat on. <laughs> oh. And so that's pretty cute. Yeah, so let's just keep this on standby and let's kind of set aside the decorations since we're, we're in a good place and think about how uh, we want to display the photos. Should we use both? Should we just use one um, and kind of decorate the one side and then highlight this side uh, with the photo? I think that's what we should do rather than try to put two photos on one page. I'll just use the one photo on this side. That way I can decorate over here and have it spill over here. Um, okay, so one of the one of the things that you want to make sure you're doing when you're paper crafting is you can cut with scissors, but similar to sewing, um, scissors just don't allow for straight cutting. <laughs> they allow for snipping and the quick job, but when you really want something that's straight, um, you want to use a paper trimmer of some kind. So I've got my guillotine style here. I'm just going to trim it. I'm not even coming up with a measurement right now. I, I don't think I need one at this point um, because I'm just going to do my backdrops to measure the size of this trimmed photo. So get rid of those little extra pieces. And on my paper, let's choose a background that we like for the paper or more than one. I kind of really love this as a strip. So I'm going to go ahead with the paper cutter and well, I also love this as a strip. So let's just see what works with the size of the paper and whether or not that big red stripe works or not. It might be nice for a big pop of color. Let's just see. So I'm going to cut out the strip just along, just above that dotted line. And then below the, the dotted line too, so that we kind of end up with a strip. <laughs> Cute. And then I'll cut this strip too, because it, this on its own is, is quite nice. So just below that dotted line. And then this is just extra. I'll put it back in the paper tray. And oh, look at this. This little extra too is quite nice. So let's just keep that as a maybe. All right, I'm going to bring back my my layout page and see whether or not this might be too thick or is it the kind of thing that looks nice if it's running across the entire strip like i could run it from here chop it and then pick it up and run it again over here but it might be a little too thick what about this one is this better let's see with the picture this one probably works better in terms of size but i really do love the like, it, I, I think it's the quilt block that's speaking to me. Um, I could always cut it like this and, you know, kind of do that kind of thing. I could even just do the smaller one and have it anchor um, the page. Maybe that's the way to go. Not quite so thick. 
let's let's audition this one now too. Yeah, I think the big one is fine. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Um, so what I'm going to do is just, I like when you're doing a double layout, the idea of having one theme continue from one side and then you've got your rings for the binder in the middle and then it goes over. It really makes things nice and cohesive. Um, I'm just using my craft knife here instead of the, just easily get the exact right size. And then whatever's left over, let's just bring it on this side. And you'll notice I'll need to put another hole punch here because if I go over that hole, because um, I think the when you operate in thirds, like this is the lower third, it, it gives it, the page a nice balance. Okay, so do we have, uh, yeah, we have just enough uh, here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll, I'll maintain that border on the edge. So just right there. I'll make sure to slice. So that's going to look good and kind of keep the two coming together. Still gives me the feel, even though I don't get to use my precious. Somewhere along the way, this will come out, I'm sure. Um, tape runner. Now, the other thing we could do, since this sort of is mimicking sewing, and my machine has, I know, this stitch, is we could go ahead and sew um, an applique stitch right along the bottom here, like those X's in real thread. Um, or we could just go ahead and right down the middle here, do straight stitches since this already looks like thread. So why don't I do that? Cause that's kind of cool. Um, so I've got my sewing machine here. This is the Janome uh, 9410. And I'm just making sure, yeah, you can see it. Um, I'm just threading it with white thread, but you could use whatever you've got. And any sewing machine will, um, will sew on paper, by the way. Yeah, it's it's like no big deal for a sewing machine. Just use the automatic needle threader here. Um, the sewing machine has no problem with uh, with thread. Oh, I can hear my phone about to die. One sec. Um, I better plug in my phone so we don't lose any of our camera angles here. Um, if you're just tuning in, I'm making a holiday album and I'm using a uh, the scrapbooking holiday bundle album that we've got um, on for Black Friday. And it's $39.99. And it includes about $100 worth of Christmas scrapbooking stuff, including the album, which is what we're making here, uh, one of these albums. So it comes with the album and all this stuff. Uh, so you'll be able to, you know, put together something similar with your own uh, pictures and things like that. All right, so I'm just gonna bring this to the sewing machine and run a row of, maybe I'll do zigzag stitches down. Choose the zigzag stitch and I'll make it a little bit bigger. Um, just so that the fabric really stands out. And I've got the clear foot on here and I'm not using any glue. I'm just uh, gonna stitch this down. We don't need the glue uh, gumming up the machine in any way. But take a look. That nice like zigzag down the paper just for a little extra texture. I know lots of you have sewing machines, so why not use it in, uh, in all kinds of different ways? All right, I'm gonna sew along that side again too. And it's subtle, you know, like it's, it's not in your face, like it's just a little subtle bit of, And then I'll go ahead and do this side too. I'm just making sure it's nice and even. You can see those stitches and then just down the other side. Uh, 
Um, all our sewing machines are um, on Black Friday sale right now. So if uh, you need a new machine or you think, you know, someone in your life would like uh, a sewing machine, then yeah, take a look, homemade.ca, and you can get an extra 10% off uh, any of our, our machines that we've got. Um, yeah. Okay, this looks so cute, and I love it with that stitching. Good. All right, we need something to anchor um, the 25 here. And now I can put the 25 like on its own, but it probably would look nice if it was on something. Um, like maybe, let's take a look here and see what we've got. Actually, I like this with the trees and the pink. Why don't I cut something like that out and see if, if that works? What I like about using a paper pad like this, it's sort of like getting a fabric collection is, you know, if you use something in a collection, all of the colors are going to work together. Um, and you're not trying to match up, you know, hues of pink or red or whatever. You already know that uh, the designer has taken care of that. So let's try this for... I got a little wave of blue on the top there. Let's snip it again. And so I still want to be able to see Monday, but this will kind of act as a bit of an anchor for our actual numbers. Now, it could be a little bit thinner. Or I need to move it kind of down and over. Hmm. I kind of wish the border was down here instead. And then it was sort of up like that so that the 25 could speak for itself. Is there one that matches a little more like that? Hmm. Maybe I need to do, maybe I need to cut the trees off. Let's do that. If it doesn't work for you, make it work. So let's snip the trees off. And I can tell you, I'm not starting these pages with any sort of great plan. I'm just starting and seeing where it takes me. Yeah, that's a bit better, actually. That way, the 25 has a, has a bit of an anchor point. Um, but because the trees were at the top, I'll just switch them to the bottom. I'm going to make this a little bit thinner. And a little bit more square, like a calendar block. So it stands out like it's jumping out of the Monday. Um, now, it's Christmas is probably down here somewhere. Should should that be where we put this? Because um, probably because Christmas is always like the last week of the month. Maybe it needs to be down here on the Monday, not not up here. And then when we get to the photo on this side, we can have it be up here. That way we've got some balance going on the two, on the two sides. Um, and then with our trees, I guess, either we use them or we don't use them. It's not, uh, it's not critical. All right. So I could um, put some more stitches down here, like some straight stitches maybe, uh, or I could puff it up and put some foam dots on um, on the back. Let's do that. That way, um, foam dots are great because they have adhesive on them and they help your um, paper stand out from the background. So I've got a couple here. So if I put in the middle. And then you just pull off the, the little uh, 
paper backing and then you expose the adhesive on this side. And let's make this the 25th calendar block like that. Yeah. And then um, I can use a bit of tape runner or glue, but this is, this is, this is great. Let's put a little adhesive on the back of the two and the five there. And these big cardboard, like the chipboard numbers and, you know, embellishments are so fun. You can use them all over the place. Isn't that nice? And then we could have like a couple things that match it, like kind of around it. You know, this whole package that you get, I don't know if stars would be nicer or snowflakes. What do you guys think? Stars, snowflakes? Let's audition some in a couple different sizes. Maybe both. I like the snowflakes, I think, mostly because they're outside in the photo. All right. Now, before we start to really um, get this all dressed up, I don't know about all is bright. We'll see about that. Um, let's mount this photo. What do we think about the green? Or should we stick with the red? Could use it up like this, but then this is going to cover. Nope. What other papers did we pull? Let's see. It's cute. You might need something a little brighter since. about something like this. If we did something like this, I think we should double it up twice. Looks good. This is nice too. So remember, you're getting this 24 um, by 24 inch paper pad in the bundle. Uh, it's over $100 worth of um, scrapbooking stuff. I wonder if the dark green would help it pop off the page a little bit more too. What do you guys think? Stick with the red or add the green in? Um, or do the green with the two like this and kind of... Yeah, maybe we'll do that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and measure out the photo next to the paper. My trimmer. Make sure I've got enough just to frame out that photo. And then let's do it with, I'm going to try the green stripes or the darker green. The darker green acts as a bit better of an anchor. I'm going 
getting a lot on my table here. I should pick up these photos. I don't need all of these around anymore. And I don't want anything to get on them because we'll use them for another page sometime. Making sure this is lining up. There we go. Okay, this looks nice. So a couple of options. We can kind of play it straight and narrow and just get it on here nice and framed out. We could have it be a little askew. That way we've got a little more room for some of the things that we wanted to add on. Um, maybe some of the cute stuff we wanted to have peek out. So let's try it like that. That way we leave ourselves a little bit of space. So I'll go ahead and put this one flat down. Now, hmm. We could go ahead and add some stitches right around the edge of the green here. So we're kind of picking up on that sewing vibe. So I'm just going to straight stitch this time and just around the edge of the paper. And then once I get to the end, just press your foot up and pivot. Pivot. Pivot again. Went a little too far off the page there. I'll snip those. And down we go. we go. Although we might not even see that uh, if it's uh, covered over. All right, trim the thread. Yeah, we're not even going to see that anyway. So that's a little extra bonus texture there that kind of plays on the stitches. And I think we probably do need a little bit of red or brown or something behind. Since this is so dark, uh, we might need a little bit of something behind this picture here. Let's just try this one again. Yeah. Everybody's quiet and watching. Where are you tuning in from? I always like knowing where you guys are in the world. We are at uh, Homemade in Kingston, Ontario. Um, if you're local, pop in for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Uh, you can shop online for Cyber Monday. The shop is closed on Mondays, but we're open um, Tuesday to Saturday, well, Tuesday to Friday, 10 to 6, and Saturday is from 9 until 4. So, yeah, come see us sometime. And I'm just going to add some of that tape runner here.
and I'll add some of the foam adhesive to the back because that's going to help me um, have room to tuck in some of the decorations we're going to use because I can slide them easily underneath. So once all of this is off and I hear it down, it's just going to kind of jump off the page a little bit more. And so I'm going to just add the, I guess I should have done this part first, but. So add this here. And this one here. And now see how we've got kind of a big uh, drop here. We can just add another piece of uh, the foam and then the, everything will be laying nice and even. Go oh, there now. Now when you touch it, everything's nice and flat. Cute. Okay, so let's choose some embellishments here, and we're uh, we're we're nearly there. I like some of these, the bundle up. So these are stickers. Um, you can find a couple. Kind of goes with what they're doing. And we can add the snowflake like that there. And maybe we add another one on their side too. If we're kind of going with the keeping warm type thing, we could have a couple like there. I know there was a toque. Now the toque is bringing in another color. We've also got a couple toques here, like the maybe more in the color scheme. Let's see. This, or we can bring it like, kind of hide it underneath like this. And then maybe down here, we could kind of have those mugs of hot chocolate, like they're waiting for them after they're done outside. You know, that's the way the kids always work. Is a little like this kind of thing. And I had another hot chocolate mug. I thought there was one in pink. There it is. I think maybe the pink one. Let's do this. And so you can kind of see, you don't need to be an expert scrapbooker to have a little bit of fun with paper and adhesive and, um, you know, even bring in your sewing machine for a bit of the job.
just kind of let yourself have a play. And there's so much in this kit. If you wanted to give everybody a sheet of paper and everybody could share some stickers and things like that, um, you know, this is a nice whole family thing to, to do uh, is each make a page, especially if you've gone and done something fun for the holidays. If everybody went skating or if everyone went to a show or went to someone's home um, and you have a bunch of pictures, then, you know, you could do something like put it together as a little uh, album when you get back. So let's anchor this uh, mug and these mugs here, maybe we'll just do a little extra. We have that extra piece. So they're not just floating in, in midair. Just lift this up and get that under there just for a little extra anchoring. There we go. You can snip that off. And let's see. All is bright looks kind of cute. Those trees are still an option. I think it, the all is bright is nice. What else do we have for words? Warm wishes would look good um, since we're talking about snuggly type things. Let me see how that looks. We can audition it. Sort of warm wishes on the 25th. Or what about, hmm. What I like about these stickers is you can put them right back on. What about the let's get cozy? So if we're going to do let's get cozy, I think there needs to be a little something underneath there um, to anchor it. So I'm going to just take this strip off of this card. And put it right up top here, kind of echoing that red one down there. So I have something to anchor that let's get cozy to. And then maybe we go like with the toque. Be a little something more here. Um, hmm. Maybe we could do something that has the date on it, or we could bring in some of our washi tape. Um, that's always fun to just add a strip of uh, tape. Oh, I've got stickers on the side here. Get these stickers off. Um, Got to hand it to packaging. Gosh, it's like, I wish they'd make my home this secure. All right. So all these great little uh, rolls of washi tape. This one's kind of cool because it has little sentiments on it. This one says bundle up, which is what it says here. That's kind of cool. All is bright. Mary, let's just see what we got. So we could be going um, a little bit down here, all is bright, or the bundle up. I'm going to do the bundle up. How are we doing for time, Karin? How long have we been going? Minutes. 51 minutes. Okay. Um, we're almost finished here. Let's put a little piece of that tape. Kind of echoes that bundle up. And we have a few more snowflake stickers here. Kind of get some in and around. 
So I'm loving this side. There's lots of great stuff going on on this side. Try to uh, work in uh, threes. So we've got three snowflakes, like one, two, three, and try to balance them out. So if we've got in a triangular balance, it always looks nice. And so we've got this. We just need a little bit more going on here, potentially. We could put those gifts. Would look good. Maybe the ski chalet could be cute in the corner, something like that. And since we're on that side and it's a little more outdoorsy, we could do the little, the little skunk, <laughs> kind of cute. Even just a little. And let's see what else we have in the um, You know, the trees that we were thinking about over there could go under here. That'd look nice. And then maybe I'll, I'll glue them on, but I'll put a piece of that washi tape just underneath also. Cute. And then the last thing we kind of need is we'll use a bit, a few of our um, dots. Let's bring in some of these. It's always nice for some extra texture. We've got a few more snowflakes, so we could put those right on the photo like that. Just kind of have a couple in the corner in different sizes. Cute. Maybe we'll do there. And then a couple for sticking with the snowflake motif. Add the, a couple around this side. Always in try to do threes. And then we've got a couple little spots here. If you wanted to do some journaling or put, you know, some some dates that were important. Um, if you've got, you know, some pens, black pen, or um, you know, you could do a little bit of journaling. Um, and I can write Violet and Emery. Always. Oh, I'm just putting the forest walk that we went on here and the year that they did it and you know you can type it or write in your own bit of journaling so that you can add your own like sort of prompt your memory and that's a quick and easy like double layout on you know a little calendar page that kind of played off the numbers used a bit from the kit so when we open up our binder oh i still need to make that hole punch i don't have a hole punch right with me but i do have my craft knife so i'll just do this for now so that i can i'll just put a little x so i can at least get it in my binder until i hole punch it same with this side All right, what do you guys think? Think you could pull it off if you've never scrapbooked before? I think you can. It's pretty, uh, all of the stuff is in the kit. And then look how nice it is together in the book. When you open that up, um, you know, this took less than an hour to do, and you'll have everything you need in the kit. 
$39.95 for um, both the book and all of the stuff that I've used here, the washi tape, all the little ephemera. Um, all you really need is, you know, some adhesive and some scissors. And I even used my sewing machine to add a little bit of extra texture. And I'm going to leave those threads. That actually looks kind of cute and homespun. And so, yeah, let's get cozy December 25th for sure. I love it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Um, I appreciate you being here with me this hour. We're having so much fun as the crafting marathon continues. Uh, yeah, we got lots more to come. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in this hour. Bye. <laughs>